Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today we are in Delaware. This is our first fire company in Delaware and we're doing the Millsboro Fire Company. This is our first station in Delaware. So to help us with this tour, I'm gonna to meet up with the president of the company. This is Ron O'Neill. Thank you for inviting us down. Mike, thank you for being here. Welcome to Millsboro. So this is a fire company that has multiple additions throughout the years. Can you first of all tell us when you guys were incorporated and some of the history about the building here? Sure. We were incorporated in 1926. Uh, first fire company in Millsboro here. The original part of the building here that we're gonna look at was completed in around the late 1920s. Uh, it was originally not only the fire company, but it was also the police department, the police station, and it was also the town center. Okay. So the old jail cells were actually down in the basement. So this was the original part of the building, and then we'll go through the rest of the building as we go through. Okay. In your foyer here, you got a very nice uh, mural on the floor and like a little museum. You got a fire pole. What's in here? These are just some of the first uh, fire coats that we had here. Uh, you'll see some of the ladies' auxiliary turnout gear or some gear here as well and some of the old gear that came from, there's an old fire police jacket and some of the old gear and uh, parade uh, parade uh, gear there as well, so. Right, right. It's kind of cool walking in, you know, you immediately met with the history. Mm -hmm. So it gives that feeling of, you know, this is, you have pride in, in your service. Being around since the late 1920s, all the way to now in one location is pretty cool. We sure enough do. This so. is our main station, our only location right now, even though we're looking at uh, expanding into a substation here later on this year. Okay. But right now, everybody responds out of this main station. Okay, and it's pretty large. You got a bunch of equipment here. Mm -hmm. You have some antique stuff here in the old building. We sure do. So making our way into the old building here, you have two pieces of apparatus. Can you tell us about these? Sure. Uh, the first you see here is a 1935 Rio still runs, still pumps. We still take it out for, uh, for parades and things of that nature. The second piece here is a 1942 Ford. Both of these pieces were built by the Wilmington Fire Apparatus up in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, this is one of the last pieces that came off their production line before it went into, before they went into uh, supplying equipment for the, uh, the war effort. Okay, okay. You know, did you have these the whole time or did they go away and come back? We've had a couple that we've gone to that they, you know, were sold and they came back and that kind of stuff. Actually, the Rio was, uh, we had that originally, then it was sold to Bethany Beach. I believe they used it for a number of years and they turned around and sold it to a junk dealer. Finally, we found it in a farmer's field. It had an actual tree growing up through the back of it. Uh, we got it back from the farmer, restored it, and that's the way you see it today. Very nice to have. Now this building is also pretty cool too. If you look at the ceiling, you still have the old kind of tin ceiling, stuff like that. And that's reminiscent of you know, how fire stations used to be. You even have the old fill that runs across to fill your old tankers and your engines and stuff like that. Right, it's, it, of course it doesn't work anymore, but uh, but yeah, we left that in here to try to, to, to give the historical data. Okay, and in the back here, you have a little bit more museum. Let's walk our way back here. Sure. We're crossing a wall here that has a lot of your past members and chiefs, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your plaques and awards. And back here, every firehouse has, you know, a lot of awards. They do, you know, the parades and things like that. This is a nice way to do that. It's a closed room, kind of keeps things clean, but it portrays everything for those new members that are coming here to say, hey, this is who we are, this is what we've, what we've done. Yes, sir, very proud of it, very proud of it. What's this here? This is a hand cart that used to be here in Millsboro and we got that, uh, had that back and restored and got it sitting here in the, uh, in the museum just for show. Imagine doing that now. Oh, no, no, I can't, no. <laughs> They were the band back then. That's right, that's so. true, that's true. All right, how about we go upstairs? You got sure. some administra administrative stuff upstairs, sure uh, a little day room, and then we'll make our way down to the apparatus floor. Perfect. What we have up here, Mike, is just a, uh, a crew rest area. Guys come up here and relax, and you can sit here and watch TV, play some pool, play some foosball, just kind of get away from the downstairs downstairs rat race. Yeah, it's nice and comfortable up here. You got some good chairs, big screen TV, place that people can come relax, hang out. You know, a lot of the firehouses we go to have these kind of rooms that are supposed to build camaraderie. Mm -hmm. You know, having a game room like this and having a foosball table kind of wants to bring that gathering place here. And you guys did a great job with that. Above the pool table, you have a pretty unique lamp there or a light. Who made that? Uh, this was made by one of our members a number of years ago, Scott Veazey got it set up so we could put some some display things in there but also has lights in it so he did a real good job on setting that up right and it uh, works out well up here in the uh, over top of the pool table. so one of the things that we keep coming across time and time again is firehouses that especially volunteer firehouses and even paid firehouses there's a lot of tradesmen 
not just here to fight fire, but they have woodworking skills, they have metalworking skills, they have lots of different things. Yeah. And your firehouse is just like that. Yeah, we have a lot of guys who love to pitch in and do a, do a lot of things just like that. And that's what's needed. In order to keep these kind of firehouses running year after year after year, hundreds of years for your case, mm -hmm. you know, you need those kind of people to continue to volunteer and, and come down and help out. Exactly. So it's not always about just getting out and don't go on the fire. It's about helping the community by keeping this house running. Exactly. So speaking of helping the community and making it run, around the corner here is your administrative office. Yeah, we have offices up here for our EMS supervisor, our uh, president, our administrative assistant, also the ladies auxiliary, and then some other uh, associated storage areas up right. here as well. Now you mentioned ladies auxiliary. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen those a lot over the time and they help finance your, your station. Uh, they have fundraisers. Uh, they also cater some of the events that we have, but uh, we have probably about 15, 15 to 20 auxiliary members right now who are, are fairly active and who help out. Yeah. One of the things that is difficult is finance. So having a great administration to, to help with those kind of things. You guys do a couple of different things. You do uh, a, a race, I heard, to help raise finance. You do uh, mailers twice a year. What else do you guys kind of do? We do, uh, we do one fund drive for the fire side a year. Okay. We actually do two fund drives for the EMS side per year. Works out very, very well for us. Uh, like I say, we also have the Northeast Car Rally comes here once a year. Uh, it's, it's a great event. Everybody pitches in and we do great, very well with, there as well with that fundraiser. Okay. Do you have a website that people could go to maybe if they wanted to donate above and beyond? Sure do. Oh. www.millsboroughfire.com. All right. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this side of the building. You know, the, it's, it's a smaller footprint. This is what you started with, mm -hmm. but you were able to add on. Yes, sir. So let's walk back downstairs and start looking at some of your apparatus. Great. We'll do. Coming back off the top floor here through the apparatus bay, we're coming into another apparatus bay that you have. This is one of five different places you have for apparatus. Mm -hmm. But this one's kind of unique because it's not only an apparatus bay, it's a crew room, it's a radio room, you have some basically uh, computer rooms and another little lounge, and right? A bunk, and a bunk room off there for the EMS crew. So yeah, this is basically where the EMS operation operates out of. Uh, we have their gear racks here. Command truck is parked in here. Uh, right now we have a, an ambulance, one of our ambulances is in the shop right now, so we, we appreciate Roxana Fire Company giving us, uh, lending us one of theirs for a little bit, so we work together with operations like that. But this is where the EMS folks kind of hang out. They have their own little kitchenette here, round table, and uh, like I said, their gear racks. And yeah, for being an apparatus bay, you know, and storing trucks in here, this almost feels just like a regular room. It doesn't feel like a garage that we would normally think of an apparatus bay or garage. Yeah. We had this floor put in here a couple years ago and, and it just, uh, it helps bring some sense to the room. You know, it just makes the room feel a little bit better. Right, but you also, in an apparatus bay, you put some things on the wall. So these things over here, mm -hmm. uh, your cork board has a bunch of, you know, attaboys mm -hmm. uh, for the crew to see. This is, you know, both EMS and fire, I assume. Yes, yes it is. Mostly EMS, we get a lot of thank yous from the community for our EMS operations. and. Uh, uh, you know, that's why we're very proud of those guys. They do a great job for us. Right. Now, you are a combination kind of station. You have some paid EMS, uh, um, but you're volunteer firefighter. Is that correct? Basically, all of our firefighters are volunteer. Uh, we have our, our EMS is a paid organization. We have 12 full-time people right now, plus a paid EMS supervisor. Okay. Uh, we do have a paid administrative assistant, but all of our other folks are volunteers. Okay. And how many calls do you normally run for the EMS side, give or take? EMS, we're in the range of 35 to 3,600 uh, a year. Uh, fire calls were right around 500. We'll probably hit just a little over 500 this year, but our ambulances are, are very busy for this part of town. Yeah, and you are in Delaware, and you run BLS out of here, and you're supported by the local hospitals? Uh, we're supported by supported by the local Sussex County uh, Emergency Operations. They're, they're paramedics. Oh, so it's a county so system. So they work for the county. Okay, okay. That's a unique way to do it. So they use the chase car that we talked about before in our videos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, supporting the local BLS services. Exactly. Uh, out this way is where these ambulances are stored, correct? Yes, sir. All right, let's go check them out. Sure. So this is your third apparatus bay, and you store a couple of different things here. You store a uh, utility that's currently out on a call. When we were doing our walk around, they got dispatched for water rescue. To a water rescue, yeah. We're only about two blocks from the head of the Indian River, so right now, uh, those guys are out on a uh, on a call. We do have a traffic control vehicle here. Okay. One of the interesting things about the traffic control vehicle is that uh, 
<laughs> Check that out. The guys have their own coffee maker there. They're pretty well set for the number of hours that they have to spend out on the road. Right. You know, taking care of shutting traffic down and things of that nature. So. Right. Uh, yeah, Bloomsburg just did a, a traffic unit, and a lot of people don't, aren't understanding what traffic units are about. Mm -hmm. Now, you are designated by the Delaware State Police to help with traffic, correct? Yes. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. So this, this particular piece of apparatus has an arrow board on it that flips up. So those guys, they spend a lot of time out there on the roads taking care of us. That's for sure. And they're self-sufficient with and the coffee. they're self-sufficient. That's true. And what else do you store in here? You store another ambulance that's where, right here. There's usually two ambulances here. We have one out on a run right now. They just left. This is our newest piece of apparatus right here. Basically our newest ambulance. We just had it. Uh, it's only been here a couple weeks. Okay. This is a four-wheel drive Ford. You also have a social hall on the back side. Yes, we do. Yes, sir. So this social hall was built when? Uh, it's built in 2001. Okay, and each of these engine bays or apparatus bays, you've added on over the years. Do you okay. remember when those were added? We'd add over the number of years. This one uh, that we're standing in right now is about 2009. And the one on the other side there that we'll go into later uh, was in the mid 70s. Okay. But this is actually, oh, we have, a, we have an event setting up. <laughs> this is actually a full commercial kitchen that we use. Uh, we have a banquet hall. It's a 3,600 square foot banquet hall that's used anywhere between 85 and 90 times a year. Wow, that's a lot of rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I wanted to rent this for a wedding or an anniversary or something like that on a Saturday afternoon, is it gonna break my budget? No, it will not. We try to make it uh, uh, so it's easy for anybody to come in here. We're about the only uh, facility that rents in the area that uh, you're allowed to bring in your own caterer. Ah. So uh, so yeah, we, we try to keep it uh, in a good range so everybody can come in. Yeah, and if I look around, you got the fridges, the freezers, you got the grills and the, you, you know everything that you need to do a good party here. So yeah, it's and a... the capacity of this thing is huge. Mm -hmm. If we look out, there's a couple people here setting up for an event probably tomorrow or tonight. Tomorrow? You can hold 250? Uh, 250 is the seated capacity in this in this particular facility, yeah. Right, and you got an entrance off backside, so you don't have to come through the firehouse in, and you got an entrance on either side? On either side and in the back, so we can basically close off this area so, uh, so the folks here who are renting for an event don't really have to necessarily be inside the firehouse. They can just have their own contained area here. Right, so we talked about finance before, mm -hmm. you know, upstairs. This is another way to generate some revenue exactly yes sir to help yes, support sir, it, it. Is. Mm -hmm. yeah it is wow this is pretty cool we got a couple more apparatus bays to check out yes we do we got to head back outside to hit bay number four mm -hmm. and five okay we'll All do right. so coming from the social hall we're going to make our way into their fourth apparatus bay but as we're coming back i noticed the guys came back from their marine call it's being towed by that utility that's supposed to be in this other engine bay right yes sir and this is uh, what kind of boat and what year is it it's a 2016 sea arc they were just out on the uh, on a call for a uh, pontoon boat in distress, and that's usually kept across the street in our other pole wheel. Okay, okay. Well, so we'll take a look at that engine bay in just a little bit sure. and where that's stored. Coming into your fourth engine bay here, you have quite a bit of apparatus. This is a pull through, but you guys kind of back some things in, and you have a pretty large truck here uh, here that you store right here. First of all, let's start here. What's this? This is a Chevrolet Duramax. This is a 2015 brush truck that we have. Carries 200 gallons of water set up with the uh, ground sweeps in the front. We use this to uh, go off-road and in our fields and uh, woods fires, things of that nature. Okay, and right next to us is? This is a 6,000 gallon tanker uh, set up as a tractor trailer. The important part or the interesting part of this is it's not just a tanker, but it does have a pump on it as well. So we can use this basically as a pumper. So you're a 6,000 gallon 6, gallons, yes, pumper sir. Mm -hmm. being pulled by a tractor trailer. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is pretty cool to have. A lot of the tankers that we saw, or people call them tenders all over the, this place, um, they're usually, you know, they have to dump it into a pool and then they draft and mm -hmm. all those kind of things. But that actually has a pump on it. Yes, it does. That's awesome. So right here, what do we have? This is a 1997 International four-wheel drive. We use this, again, as a uh, brush truck, brush okay. piece, 500 gallons of water. Wow. And you got a couple more things back here. You have a rescue. Uh huh. You have a ladder. And what else are over on the other side? Sitting up front there is 83.4. That is a 2008 pumper built by a Spartan pumper built by, built by four guys up in Pennsylvania. Sitting behind that is a 1990. There again, a thousand gallon pumper uh, Spartan, again, built by four guys up in Pennsylvania. Now, four guys is not just four guys. That's an actual company. That's an actual company. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> right. not just so those guys. that aren't watching, you know, or aren't firefighters, they don't know that 
This is just four guys that are doing it. That's yeah. an actual company. Yeah, it's an actual company. Yes, sir. And you have a 75 foot ladder, right? This is a 75 foot E1, so 2012. Again, 75 uh, foot carries 450 gallons of water and it does have 50 gallons of compressed air foam on it as well. Okay, so, and then this is your rescue? This is a 2018 E1 rescue, yes sir. Okay, and this one we're gonna do a station rigs on a little bit later. Exactly. So we'll yeah. get a full detail of this, so pay attention. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so you can keep watching more and you're gonna see an awesome station rigs on that. So in here, you also have uh, all your gear for your firefighters. Uh, about how many members do you have? We have approximately 70 members. Most of those uh, are active. Uh, we have a real good junior program too. We have four or, four or five members in there in the junior program at this point in time. So there again, we're trying to bring those, those guys in as young as we can get them. And, uh, and bring those up and hopefully they'll 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 stay with us for a number of years okay so speaking of new members and stuff like that if i were to come down what do i have to do to become a member uh there's a uh there's a program that uh, you have to have so many training points uh you have to have your training uh, and we we require basic structural hazmat uh, vehicle operations emergency vehicle operations and uh vehicle rescue Okay. Some of the classes that we require, and you, and you have basically two years to get those done. We give you a probationary period, okay. and uh, we, we take the junior program starts as young as 14, and then once you become 18, you can join as a full member. So if I'm coming down here, maybe I moved from Pennsylvania where I come, to move down here, do I have to have those classes first, or do you put me through those kind of classes? Uh, it really depends. If you come down here with no fire experience whatsoever, we will put you through those classes. Okay. If you have experience from other states, you bring your, your training records with you, and those are qualified through the uh, through our training facility, uh, Delaware State Fire School. Okay, okay. All right, we have another apparatus bay to look at. Mm -hmm. You This property is kind of unique because it's fairly large. You have a good footprint here from the old building to the add-ons. You have a parking lot across the street, mm -hmm. and kind of kitty corner to this is another kind of parking lot and another engine bay. Yes, sir. And let's go see, take a look what you have over there. Great. Across the street here is your fifth apparatus bay. This is your newest apparatus bay. Yes, it And is. you hold a couple of unique pieces of apparatus back here. Yes, it's sir, It's not we do. just for engines and, and pump tankers, but you have some other stuff. What do you have back here? Uh, the first thing you see here is, the, uh, is our hazmat trailer. We are uh, countywide, kind of in the center of the county, so we have a trailer that is supplied by Delaware Natural Resources, our DENREC uh, our operation. So they've given us this trailer and we respond to any type of hazmat uh, material uh, responses that, uh, that happen in the county. Okay. And next to that, you have a UTV. We have a UTV. Set up kind of like a brush truck and EMS unit, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We've got, uh, got some water on here. We also have a collapsible backboard on there in case we need to go out and pull somebody out of the woods or, uh, or something of that nature. So this is normally where you store the boat that we saw across the street that just came back from a call, but you have another little John boat? We have a John boat here for some of the ponds that we have around the area, help us out quite a bit. Okay, and you have a dive unit too? Yes, we do. We have a number of our members who are part of the dive unit, and so they respond to any type of emergencies uh, throughout the county. So let's review here. For your company, you have a tanker, mm -hmm. you have engines, mm -hmm. you have a ladder, mm -hmm. you have a rescue, you have hazmat, you have ambulance, you have dive team, you pretty much got, got it. it all you covered. got it all. We're here. That's so, it. you know, anybody that's really interested in coming down and volunteering and knowing what EMS is about, knowing what fire is about, mm -hmm. uh, this is a great place to do that. You have an awesome station across the street. You have this little, you know, bay over here. You got plenty of parking for everybody. Mm -hmm. Millsboro is doing it awesome. We want to say thank you very much for inviting us down. Hopefully the people that are watching this really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we appreciate you. Hey, appreciate it, Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. So once again, this is Heroes Next Door. You're watching Station Cribs. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so we can keep bringing you more. We're trying to hit that 50,000 mark in just a couple months.